time for our next project. Today, Runa, we are going to be working on sewing up some curtains for our boat here between these blinds. Um, when they are down, they are like such. When we purchased the boat, uh, there was nice accenting uh, drapery slash curtains, if you will. Not designed to actually spread out, but to go on the middle part here on the ends and then a section that went across uh, the front there as well it was it's an outdated fabric I'll show you to you in a minute um, they didn't actually slide on the front not not that it's easy to get up there and know that you're gonna do that a lot are you gonna narrate too Apparently. but uh, it would be nice if I sewed those a little looser that we could actually slide them because uh, right about this time of year the Sun is beaming in there in the morning uh, these blinds actually do serve a really good amount of uh, cold protection. I put magnets on the base here, as you can see on the top of the lip there. Uh, it snaps in the bottom, and that really cuts down on the cold. But you can see big gaps left on the end, uh, a nice little gap left in the middle, plus it just, uh, you know, it's a decorative touch as well. We've got a pretty cool fabric. I will insert a photo of it here. Ta-da! And that is a uh, Nordic rune fabric we got, uh, much better than the... Um, kind of let's say 90s Italian menagerie that uh, was here before. So let's uh, whip out the sewing machine, bust off those skills from back in my days sewing parachutes in the army, and uh, let's get sewing. This is our home and this is where we live in Seattle, Washington. That's me Eric, my wife Rashri, and these are our kids. We got tired of the usual Corporate America, long hours, living for the weekends and living for retirement. We decided to make a change. We moved out to the Pacific Northwest. We cut our expenses. We cut our income. And we decided we were going to focus on what matters most. Life, experiences, spending time with our kids, spending time with our friends and family, making the most of every single day, and truly living life to its fullest. So come join us as we explore this world. It's a lot to see and a lot to do. Let's get going. So here are our old ones. Uh, we've got a stack here. Uh, you know, I'm not exactly sure where they go. Ideally, I would have labeled these as we took them down, but I came home one day and Dev, in a fit of rage, had literally uh, taken them all down uh, and said she was done with them. And uh, okay, we're done with them, so we're going to move on to the next ones. I've got some here, similar sizes. We're going to... This looks like a front one. I'm gonna use these as patterns, obviously, so let's see if we can decipher what exactly we got here and uh, what we need to make copies of. All right, All right. good news is that we only have two sizes. Uh, we've got this large rectangular size here, and then we got these uh, three uh, that are the same. They have um, hems for bars down both ends, so that's gonna, <laughs> that's gonna ruin <laughs> That's going to be our front. Uh, we've got like 12 of these, though. Uh, and in here, there's surely going to be one, two, three, and then four, five, six. So we're going to go look around the boat and see uh, where else she might have ripped things off that we don't know about. All right, here we are in the very, very front four of the boat front head. Uh, you got two little ones here, but that's not that fabric. That's too small, and it's already got a nice, cool nautical fabric there. Uh, head back into the, uh, look at the floor. Uh, look at Michelle's bed. It's nice and clean. Uh, looking at this cabin here, this is the kid's cabin. Now there is a rod there. That's definitely going to have a covering. Uh, that could be one that just pulls sideways, or you could technically have two. Uh, I think that's a little overkill. So we'll just say one there, one over Asha's bed. So that's two. Now in the rear head, I do have a bar here, as you can see, which would allow me to have a curtain that kind of slides along and covers that porthole window. Uh, I'm thinking we're probably just going to skip that, but we will confer with the boss. So here's the fabric. Um, I think I can tell already we're going to be severely lacking as to the quantity we need if we're going to come anywhere near the number of panels we had before. And it's a little sheer as well, so it's going to let a lot of light through. Uh, not as dark as I might like, but you know what? Uh, it's the right price. Let's sew it up, give it a shot, see how it looks, and go from there. All right, before you go and start cutting up your fabric, it's important to measure up the panels Take two. All right, before you start cutting your panels, it's important to measure up the section that you did have. All right, before you start cutting up your panels, it's important to measure the section you do have with the fabric that you have. 
you might find that if your fabric size is limited as mine is, there are in actual individual sections here, that if you cut it the same size as the original one, because you got to remember, you got to allow overlap here. So we've got a hem on the bottom, we've got a hem plus a uh, section here sewn in for the uh, the rod for it to slide on. You got to allow that overage on the sides as well for a hem. You might find that if you cut your new fabric the same size as the old one, you might not have enough on this one square for two pieces, but if you cut an inch off, you might be able to get two pieces in. In this case, it looks like we're going to be perfect. I don't even mean to trim this thing top and bottom, which is great. And I think all I have to do on each section is simply split down the middle, and my hems will take care of the rest. So that worked out perfect. All right, you can rip it to pieces now. So one thing you've got to consider, especially on a fabric as sheer and see-through as this one, is that all these items here, if you just left this, hemmed it over, put it to the light, you'd have a nice rainbow color coming through there. So I'm going to trim all the extras off. Uh, I might leave the top section here, uh, potentially not because you can see it changes thicknesses. But cut everything around so I'm left with just the actual ruined fabric, and that way all my hems and everything top, bottom, side to side will all look the same as it uh as it shines through. All right, as you can see up here by my blinds, there is that bar that the uh, curtain slides on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down the, the, get the top and the sides the same, and I'm going to go ahead and sew this, hang it up there, and see how much it hangs down uh, to make sure that the length I'm going to do is the exact same as what we had before, because I have other obstructions now that we've installed, such as these little storage containers, etc. And uh, one thing I noticed on this fabric is that on the bottom half, We've got a barcode that's really going to shine through, and I don't want to cut that much fabric off if I need that for a hem. So let's get the top. We'll make that the bottom. We'll hem from the top because there's no barcodes up here. Hang it from the top side. We might find that we'll have plenty of fabric. We can actually cut all this off and still have room for our, our hem beyond that. All right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to load the bobbin. That's this little guy right here. This is the part that goes in the bottom of the sewing machine and uh, gives you fabric on the bottom side. Uh, sewing machine works that you actually have thread running along the bottom and along the top and the uh, sewing machine locks those together nice and tight so I am going to load this guy up and get it kind of wrapped around here where it goes running it on here gives it tension All right, once we feel like we've got uh, enough thread, and that's plenty, we're going to take the bobbin off. It's going to get loaded down in here, and then we're going to take, and you can see these routing instructions. Get the thread run through here, down through, there's numbers. One, two, three, four, and such. Um, get it loaded, and then into the eye of the needle. As you can see here, everything is loaded up correctly. Hopefully I got enough thread on that bottom bobbin. Might not have. It's never fun to run out in the middle of a piece. See the thread comes down there through the needle. I'm going to simply load some fabric in here, drop the foot on it, like such, and uh, we'll start making some hems. I'm going to put a, a simple hem around uh, the top and both sides of the fabric, leaving that bottom open so we can adjust the length in the future. Uh, I'll get that simple hem. That'll lock everything in. I actually did run a piece of uh, flame uh, a little lighter down the edge of this fabric as well. Obviously, it's synthetic, and that just kind of kept it from unraveling it uh, anymore. So here's here. Yeah. All right, so I got my fabric in here. I've started sewing. Started at the corner. Did uh, went forward a little bit, then backed it up just to kind of stitch over itself, kind of help hold that thread. You could pin this. You could iron this. Uh, I'm confident in my ability to hold this little kind of quarter inch lip here. Run it through. As I'm sewing, I've got a foot pedal. I'm applying pressure forward and back just to kind of hold the fabric tight. And I'm helping it advance. It'll feed it, but it's nice to help it. It's kind of thin fabric. Um, running the stitch line as straight as you can, just so it doesn't show wavy, etc. Um, moving my hands as I go, keeping about that thickness right there, pushing the pedal, and just working it down the line. Getting close to the corner here, so I'm actually pinching the corner of my right hand. Kind of run it through the edge, and then I'll show you how I'm uh, planning on transitioning that. 
keeping it folded right into the corner and we'll keep on going and right about there maybe one more stitch I'm going to manually advance it boom right there I've got the corner where I want I'm going to lift up the foot my fabric is locked in because the needle is still down rotate what I want put that foot back down and now I'm ready to continue down what will be the top here I might have to advance the fabric a little bit. It's going to be a little tricky here because I don't have much to push on. The foot doesn't have much to work with. Kind of running it in a goofy direction just to get it to advance. And then it should kind of smooth itself out. There we go. You can always go back and check, see how that corner looked. Alright, it's always nice to check every once in a while, make sure you're still running a nice uh, stitch. The last thing you want to do is run out a thread on the bottom and find you've stitched the whole thing and uh, you actually haven't done anything. Fold that lip, foot down, and again, using the pedal, got to push it through here, which is make sure you can just help it get it going. This is the, lo the last long side, the vertical side, so we're just going to run all the way down the bottom. All right, getting to the uh, the end here. Ideally, I would sew, sew all four sides, but as I mentioned, I'm gonna leave the bottom end, um, whatever that fancy name is, uh, unfinished, but fancy. Uh, that way I can fine tune that length in the future. So I'm gonna just end this stitching as if it was the end. I'm gonna come all the way to the end here, you know, get the fabric as far down as I want. I have a little reverse button on the sewing machine, push that, keep pushing the pedal, it's gonna back itself up on itself. Then I let go forward again. That just puts a bunch of stitches through the other stitches. Kind of helps keep everything nice and bangled together. Uh, flip the foot up here. Now I'm free. Got my thread. It's pulling from the top and bottom. Get it where I want. There you go. Some loose ends to get cut up, as you can see. Okay, now I've got a nice hem. Run the entire length down. Get that line nice and straight ish. And. Uh, You've got now four corners of this fabric. Now we can start measuring how much we want our top fold to be for uh, putting the rod through, etc. All right, so now I got my panel sewn on the three sides. Uh, I went and compared at this point to figure out what my top hems were going to be for the rods going through. I went back to the original piece. What they've done there is came down about three inches, and they split that about an inch and a half with another um, thread line. So this is essentially your hem, and then there's your pocket for the uh, the pole going through there. I put it up on the window and looked at it, and it actually looked fine, so I decided to do the exact same thing. So what we're going to do here is we're going to measure this down six inches, because you'll have three on each side. So straight across, get that piece done, and then we're going to sew one line at an inch and a half right down the middle, and that'll be our pocket for the rod. All right, so you can see I've sewn that three-inch top hem here, and now I'm splitting it right down the middle. Uh, measured an inch and a half down, got my little pencil marks there. Feel free to mark it as much as you'd like. Um, I'm busy helping manually feed, but for the sake of video here, just letting it work itself down. Hitting those marks right on the needle. Come straight across here, and that'll be our pocket for the rod. Alright, so with that top hem in there, I've got it on the bar, and I was able to then get the length and see where we needed to have it to have it hit the right place. When it's bunched together, which is, you know, these are more decoration, this is how they're going to be, I was able to find that, honestly, we did not have a lot of room at the bottom to mess with. So all I did was trim off that section at the bottom with the uh, the barcode on it that I showed earlier, and I just did a one-inch hem up on the bottom, just to make it uh, not minimalistic, but not using any more uh, fabric than we needed to. Uh, I can make that look prettier if I had two hands, but you get the idea. So. One inch him at the bottom. Uh, that's done. We'll get a nice. <laughs> what is going on back here? You have two hands. <laughs> oh my god. This is this is my wife being very helpful and productive. If I had three hands, what I could do is show you <clears throat> how it would fall. I could have. <laughs> so anyway, one inch him at the bottom is all you need. We'll get a nice piece of colorful fabric. Yada yada yada. There you go. There's one. There's the other side hemmed as well and now we've got the uh, four corners and uh, we'll start knocking those out.
And there we are. So you can see all the curtains finished up. We have six in total. Uh, I've gone with a knot for now just to make it easier uh, to keep them out of the way of Runa. We did not have enough fabric, as I mentioned, to do the front. So that fabric is on back where it will take a couple weeks. When it comes in, we'll get those sewed up. I'll show you guys what it look like. But there we are.